Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown, brought to you by U.S. Cellular. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. Badgers opened their Big Ten season Saturday at Northwestern, and you would expect a higher degree of urgency than we've seen maybe in a couple of the first halves thus far against non-conference opponents. Yeah, this is a game that, that carries a little more spice than, than what I thought, actually, this time last week. I, I didn't really think Northwestern would go into State College and, and win the game, and not only did Northwestern win, it dominated. I mean, it, Penn State could do very little, and maybe I'm missing something with Penn State. They had a couple of close games that they won. Maybe I gave them more credit, or maybe I haven't given Northwestern enough credit because defensively, the Wildcats were really, really good. Well, let me throw out a cliche because I do this very well. Sometimes you don't respect your opponent enough. Sometimes you don't respect the game. I think both of those intersected for Penn State. The Badgers may have not had that same edge either when they played South Florida, but they were able to overcome it with a strong second half. Nittany Lions couldn't do it. Yeah, that's what you know from the Badgers' perspective. They've had a couple of games like that where you know the Western Illinois game, one score game at the half, South Florida tie game at the half. As Gary Anderson has said, they've faced some adversity here already to these first four games and really they've handled it pretty well these last three the last three especially but it, it ratchets up now in in a venue that we know the Badgers haven't played there a lot in the last 15 years but they haven't won there at all in the last 15 years 1999 so that alone would get your attention, I would think. Badger's going to see a familiar face on the sidelines for Northwestern coach Hank Mike Hankowitz now in his seventh season as the DC for Pat Fitzgerald. What do you think he'll have cooked up for Wisconsin's running game? <laughs> yeah, the, the other professor. Yeah, I would imagine he will do what he can to challenge Wisconsin to throw the ball. I, I thought in the in the Penn State game he did a pretty good job. He did, really kept Penn State kept a very good quarterback. I think a very good quarterback on his heels throughout the course of the game. I don't know if the formula changes a, a whole lot, but I would imagine they'll do what they can to force Wisconsin to throw it and make life as difficult as possible for Melvin Gordon. The thing about, uh, thing about Northwestern, they do have some pretty big guys uh, on that defensive line. South Florida, uh, I know Barry talked about it, Gary Anderson as well, that, that those South Florida D linemen, there were some stout guys. The linebacking play was very good. Well, Northwestern has some talent in its front seven as well, so it should be a pretty good test for the match. Through the non-conference portion of the schedule, we've seen bits and pieces of the passing game falling in place with the exception of the long ball. You'd like to see if they could put together a complete game throwing the ball. Yeah, that's been the theme. Is you know There have been days where they've run it extremely well. Tanner had the 17 straight completions a few weeks ago, but you would like to be able to, to keep defenses honest, show an ability to, to stretch the field if you can a little bit. And look, if you can do that, then Melvin Gordon and Corey Clement, as good as they are, become that much better. It's it's the trick that everybody is trying to trying to solve probably throughout college football right now, but it's, it's clearly with the Badgers that's the next step, be able to prove that they can throw the ball down the field. It's been easy to identify the reliables on offense as far as catching the ball, <laughs> Sam Artisan and Alex Erickson. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Alex, you just look at the stat sheet, Alex Erickson is way ahead of the field right now, and when Sam Artisan catches the ball, oftentimes it's for touchdowns. Uh, about a third of his catches in, in his career, he hasn't had a ton of catches, but when he's made them, they've mattered. And he does all the other things as this tight end group, I think, is, is doing more and more of, as we've talked about, I think, on, on this platform a couple of times already this season. But it's fun to see Arneson get things done. It's fun to see Erickson get all his catches, but you'd like to get a few more threats in that passing game. South Florida gave us a, break, a brief reprieve from the pace offenses, now right back into it with what Northwestern wants to run. Yeah, it looks like Northwestern will vary its pace. It averages about 75 snaps per game, but it'll it'll spread you out. Uh, they'll run the ball. They'll, they'll use four different running backs in their rotation. Uh, Simeon, the quarterback, has, has had an up and down, I guess, start, but he was pretty good in the game against Penn State last week. Um, they've been hurt at some of the receiver spots. A couple of those guys are coming back, including Tony Jones, who played last week, had a good game in the opener against Cal, had seven receptions in that game. So as they get healthier in the receiving core, that obviously should ease the burden on the quarterback, uh, Trevor Simeon. I'm curious to see if they can get some pressure on Simeon. They did here last year, and they really like to implement that short passing game. And when they're hitting those passes, they're tough to slow down. Yeah, they, they, absolutely, because they, they can throw to their running backs, whoever it is, any of the four. Uh, they have the super back, Dan Vitale, who is, 
who's definitely a threat in the passing game for Northwestern. But you're right, the Badgers did. Badgers had them on their heels, but remember, sometimes it's who you play and when you play them. Last year, Northwestern came to Madison coming off that much-hyped game against Ohio State. Heartbreaker for Northwestern. Very questionable spot. Cost the Wildcats possession of the ball late in the game. So some air was taken out of Northwestern. This year, what the intangibles are worth, Northwestern's going to be feeling a lot better about things coming off a big road win last year. For usual, there'll be a lot of Badger fans in Evanston. You'd like to see Wisconsin give them something to cheer about. It, it's, it's been 15 years. It's, they've, they've only played there three times since 1999, but that, it's a venue, you know, Barry has talked about it a lot. It wasn't his favorite place to go. Uh, but, you know, the Badgers have done a pretty good job in, in with, with Brett, they did it with Gary. If it's going down to Indiana, if it's going to Purdue, in environments that aren't maybe as electric as some others, they've done a pretty good job here in recent years of winning those games. You just hope the Badgers can keep that up this, this Saturday because Northwestern, I think we're finding out, isn't all bad again here in 2014. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown brought to you by U.S. Cellular.